You can't be alone. How else would you be able to get that fucking letter? Answer me! Greg, please calm down. I'm trying to explain. Well, explain now! I found your letter. It was in a filing cabinet that I found in the basement. Cellar, whatever you want to call it. It was in a locked room that wasn't even on the blueprint of the house. You just found it? In your... In your basement? That letter ruined my life. That's why I'm here. I want to know more about the letter. And it wasn't just your letter that I found. There are thousands of them in those cabinets. And they all seem similar to yours. They're written by people that experience similar situations to you. People that need help. <sighs> Writing that letter didn't fucking help me. It was a goddamn trap. But I'll get back to that. When I found myself miraculously back in my dorm room, I initially thought that it was all some sort of dream, or nightmare, rather. I'm sure you've had one of those dreams that feel so real when you first wake up, and then, upon thinking about it, you realize how entirely ludicrous it is. How could the trip have possibly been real? It would be impossible to fly from Egypt to Maine with no recollection of the flight whatsoever. It was then when I began to hear this uh, strange noise coming from my backpack. It sounded like very light scratching. I opened the pocket of the bag that I believed the noise was coming from, and I reached in and blindly grabbed what I believed to be the source. To my horror, I, I looked into my hand to see a living, breathing, and moving scarab beetle in my hand. I panicked and dropped it to the ground. I grabbed the closest thing I could find, which ended up being my ancient religion's textbook, and crushed it. When I could finally catch my breath, I gave the creature a closer look. It was the same exact bug that I found on the cavern floor of my supposed dream. This meant that my trip was real. My classmates did all kill themselves. My professor, who orchestrated all of this, is, is still out there somewhere doing God knows what. How did I get home? Why am I home? Where was my professor? What did you do after that? I waited a few days. I expected there to be some sort of announcement on campus about the students who lost their lives, but there was nothing. I asked around the campus to see if anyone knew anything about the missing kids, but not a single person could tell me anything. And when I say anything, I really mean it. Nobody on campus had heard of any sort of trip. In fact, nobody on campus that I approached had even been able to tell me about the students. They'd never even heard of them. I eventually went to the dean to ask about the professor. Do you know what he told me? What? Nobody with that name has ever been employed at the university. And a class on ancient religions is not currently being offered. How could any of this be possible? I know these people. Were they all using fake names? Was I just... Was I just going crazy? No. No, I wasn't crazy. I know what I experienced. I know what I saw. Well, after the talk with the dean, I immediately went to a payphone and rang my parents. No answer. I tried to call my grandparents, cousins, friends back home. Not one person answered my calls. I was alone. Cut off from my whole world with nobody to talk to. I did the only thing I could do and began walking back to my dorm room. I cut through the center of campus and passed by one of those community boards where people staple flyers and things like that. Something there caught my eye. It was a black sheet of paper with this ominous red writing on it. I remember there was a strange design in the corner that drew me in, some, some sort of large triangle with what looked to be a hole in the center. Like someone stabbed the sheet of paper with a pencil or something. I approached the board to get a closer look and saw that everything on that paper was actually handwritten, which was a little strange. Most things on the board were just mass-printed flyers. I remember most of what the paper said like it was yesterday. You have seen things that should not be seen, felt things that should not be felt. You do not need to be alone anymore. And it had a mailing address. It was... That's, that's the one thing I can't recall at all, but 
I ripped off the address on the paper and went back to my dorm. I grabbed a notebook and began writing down everything that I just experienced. The trip, the suicides, everyone seemingly losing the memory of everyone involved. I, I threw a stamp on it and mailed it to the address that was given. Not even 24 hours later, I was greeted to a knock at my door. A man asking me to come with him. He says he received my letter and he wants to help. I go with him and get into his vehicle. I try and talk to him on the ride to wherever it is we're headed, and, but he, he wouldn't say a word. The next thing I know, I'm here. He said that I need to tell everyone what happened to me, and I do. For the next few weeks, I tell nurses, I tell doctors, therapists, anyone that would listen, until I can't. The words that I wanted to say refused to come out. It was then that they told me there was nothing they could do for me, that they would need to keep me here to monitor me for my own protection. I tried to object, but my words fell on deaf ears. I was eventually given an opportunity to use the phone to try and call my family to let them know how I was doing, but again, there was no answer. Oh, this was all over 30 years ago. I haven't spoken to my family since before that trip. That's... That's a lot. I'm... So sorry you had to go through all that. You believe me? Yes. I do. I'm actually experiencing something very similar. I had a friend that lived with me recently. He's been my best friend my entire life. And then one day, he disappeared. He didn't just physically disappear. I don't know, I... I somehow lost a huge chunk of time and lost all recollection of him. But the memories, they're... They're starting to come back. I know he's still here. Somewhere, I... I just can't see him. What exactly do you mean when you say, lost a chunk of time? What's the last thing you remember? My friend, Steve and I, we were in my landlord's house. We were looking for some kind of evidence about his wife that also mysteriously vanished. We were also looking to the letters. We couldn't really explain any of it, but we had a feeling that he was involved. Somehow. And it turns out that he was. He admitted to me that he made a deal with someone that if he could get me here, in Maine, he would be able to get his wife back. And he did. I saw her with my own eyes about a week ago. Who wants you here, and, and why do they want you? I... I have no idea. There was actually one thing I found. I've been trying to block it out because if I think about it too much, I will have a never-ending panic attack, but I did find a recording. I... I have no idea. There was actually one thing I found. I've been trying to block it out because if I think about it too much, I will have a never-ending panic attack, but I did find a recording. A recording? What kind of recording? When I first moved here, I started recording everything, basically. I wanted to make a sort of audio diary thing so my family back home could know what I'm doing. Anyways, I found this recording. It must have been from that chunk of time that I couldn't remember. It was hard to make out, but I could distinctly hear myself. I could hear myself screaming. And I'm not sure if it was that specific recording or another missing one that I found, but I remember hearing other voices. Come to think of it, these, these voices actually sounded vaguely familiar. It kind of sounded like... What was that? Oh, sorry. Low battery. I thought I was fully charged. Are you... are you recording this? Yeah, I, I am. I'm sorry I didn't tell you, but I, I talked to my cop friend outside and he told me everything was legal so I could just- Stop! 
Look, I, I, I'm really sorry. Stop I... right now. Turn that off. That is what they want. Greg, who? That is what they... What? I... I... I feel... Great. I told you not to upset him. Come on, Greg. Come with me. It's okay. Let's get you back to your room. You, please leave. I assume you remember the way out. I I'm so sorry. I didn't out mean to... Out that door and down the hall. Have a nice day. That could have gone better. I'm just going to wait here. Maybe they'll let me talk to him in a bit after he calms down. You're still here. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes, actually. I'm not sure how long it would take, but do you think I would be able to speak to him again? There was still so much more to talk about. He isn't used to visitors, and it was all a little too much for him. Did he say that? Unfortunately, he is in no condition to continue today. Oh. I'm sorry, but there is really nothing else I can do for you. Have a great day. Okay, I'm... I'm sorry. Have a good one. weird.